you should always high pass all your tracks. That's a pretty confusing statement, isn't it? It assumes an understanding of what you're working with. It assumes a level of superiority that the place you're reading it from or the person you're hearing it from knows more about your tracks than you do. So is this statement true or can we squash it? Well, as always, before you watch this, leave me a comment, let me know how you feel about it. Then when you're done watching the video, maybe comment on that comment and see if your opinion changed or if my reasoning made sense. Whatever, let's go. First of all, I want to say that I'm not telling you you should or shouldn't high pass your tracks. That's down to you. And unlike the people who told you you should always do it, I'm not assuming prior knowledge of the tracks you're working with. The logic behind it is solid though. Low frequencies take up a lot of space in your mix and can be the hardest thing to get right, especially when mixing in small rooms. It really comes down to three things. Firstly, your monitoring environment. Secondly, your available headroom. And thirdly, how your plugins will react to excess low end. Let's check out some audio examples straight away to try and understand this. Here's a kick drum with a nice amount of low end. I've got a compressor on the kick, which is keeping things in check nicely. By the way, this kick is from my big fat kick sample pack that you can get in the links in the description, or you can get it along with hundreds of other samples if you become a member of this channel, just FYI. Anyway, what happens when I instantiate a high pass filter before the compressor? we get far less compression, but we also lose all that low end. All right, so let's tune that high pass filter so it's not actually removing the low end of the kick, just removing some of that sub frequency nonsense. All right, so now with no filter engaged, we get 8 dB of gain reduction. With a high pass filter set at 38 Hertz, we get 7 dB of gain reduction. Interesting. I didn't hear any difference in the bottom end of the kick though, did you? Check it out again. To me it kind of sounds the same, but we're getting less compression because we're removing some of that unnecessary low frequency information. So what do we actually need to do with this information? It's cool to know as a bit of an exercise, but how does it actually help us? Well, it's about the accumulation of tracks within a mix. In its most basic form, if you're removing that low end from one track, you get one dB less compression. But if you do that across the entire mix, you're gonna get significant gains in how loud you can make your track before the limiter starts distorting stuff, if you're using a limiter. How much everything is getting compressed and a whole host of threshold-based processing is gonna change, but it's also important in terms of slotting instruments in their own pocket. If you have oodles of low end on some chuggy guitars, that's going to be overlapping where the bass should be. <laughs> Sounds like a mess. So let's just tune this high pass filter to where it's just about cutting off the very lowest stuff from the guitars. It's going to remove some of that chug and really some of the notes, but it's already there in the bass. Let's hear it before and after and hear how much it cleaned things up. <laughs> To me, that seems much cleaner. But if we do the same trick with a compressor, we see that when the high pass filters are engaged, it actually results in less compression as well. Now I can hear you all screaming, Sam, why aren't you just applying the high pass filter in the compressor so it's not reacting to the low end? That's what it's there for. Well, yeah, valid point. Except not every compressor has a high pass filter, although in my mind they probably all should. The point is that by removing it on a track level, we're then making it easier for everything else downstream, not just the compressor. Anything that deals with processing based on volume is going to be thanking you for it. In fact, putting a high pass filter before an amp sim is going to alter the sound in a different way. The amp never receives the low end, so it will break up differently. The previous amount of distortion you had because of the low end clipping stuff is now no longer there. So the saturation and distortion within the amplifier is reacting to the signal in a slightly different way. Cool, right? You can get a slightly smoother tone out of the amp just by not giving it the low end in the first place. You can try it with high end as well and then just add some of that high end back in afterwards to get something different again. But this idea of a high pass filter on a compressor is important because it's the very essence of what we're talking about. You don't give a track that low end so it doesn't give everything else downstream that low end and is not affected by it. In the compressor example, it's not getting triggered by the low end, although it is actually still compressing the low end. If that doesn't make sense to you at all, then feel free to jump over to this video after you've finished here to get the lowdown on that. 
in general, it's a good idea to remove what you don't need, is essentially what I'm saying. Vocals to remove any mic stand bumps or maybe some plosives, general rumbling, you know. Overheads on drums, maybe, so we're letting the low end get covered by the close mics, and the overheads just deal with the cymbals and overall sparkliness. If you have absolutely nothing below 80 hertz in an instrument and the low end sounds spot on the way it is, then why put a high pass filter on it? It's really a wasted act. But if it cleans the instrument up, as in the example with the chuggy guitars, then it is worth doing. I once taught a class whose previous lecturer had told them to always, I mean always, put an EQ, gate and compressor on every channel. I don't know why, but being told always to do something can be quite limiting to your learning. Here's one thing you may not have seen before though. I've taken a mix and tuned some high pass filters on every single track. I've removed the low end that wasn't really affecting the sound of the instrument at all and didn't change it. Then I did one pass where they were removing a little bit off the bottom of every instrument and one control version that had no high pass filters engaged at all. My findings were very, very interesting. I'm gonna let you make your own mind up about the results of that because I found it to be pretty illuminating. Certainly from a live sound point of view, uh, I've done live sound for many years. And whilst the studio has taken the lead for me in recent years, there are a lot of live sound techniques that don't leave you, like coining up cables properly, high passing all your channels, and knowing that the guitarist with the most expensive instrument most likely won't be the best player you're gonna hear that night. We high pass in live sound as a way to stop low frequency feedback, which can mount up over time and cause real issues. This isn't really relevant in a studio context. We don't have to balance stage volume versus monitor volume. It's not really as much of an issue in general, but in the studio, we often have to deal with mixing in small rooms where low end can be an absolute nightmare to deal with. If you're experiencing issues in the low end, then maybe try high pass filtering everything just once and see if it improves things. Often issues down at 20 hertz can cause issues at 40 hertz, which can cause issues at 80 hertz and so on. And it may actually be that your studio environment is the thing holding you back from getting a nice solid low end. So is it important in a studio context, high pass filters? Well, yes, it is, but only if you actually need it. If you're spending your time high passing every single instrument just because you've been told you should, then you're wasting your time because you're not actually listening. That's the key point, listen. If you're high passing all your instruments because you've listened to them and there is an issue in the low end, then crack on, do it. Remove that low end like your life depended on it and move forward with a little more headroom. Go forth and make your masters loud like it's 1999. So there we go. It's not that you should always high pass all your tracks. It's more that you should always high pass your tracks, but ultimately if it's not improving things, then don't bother. Use your ears, that's the main thing. Remove what you don't need, whether that be low frequencies, high frequencies, that t-shirt your ex-girlfriend gave you that you can't quite let go of. Let it go, you'll feel better. Take care.